In my previous video, coming out of depression one, we looked at Psalm 23 and verse 3. He restoreth my soul, where we saw how a shepherd restores a cast down sheep, which is a type of a depressed person. As we also saw in Psalm 42 and verse 5, where David says, Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Then we looked at the dangers of being cast down, leading to Christians getting depressed. In this video, coming out of depression too, we will look at the way out of depression. How to use the inherent nature of self to come out of it, and also how to deal with the spirit of depression through prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that in Jesus Christ we have such a wonderful shepherd. We will never want for or lack his tender loving care. Like David, we too can proclaim the Lord he is our shepherd. He is my shepherd. The restorer of my soul. Now let's look at the way out of depression. As I said earlier, when people come for ministry, one look at their faces and you can tell what's going on in their minds. Their faces are downcast, dark. They cannot stop. They cannot seem to stop thinking the thoughts that are running and flitting through their mind. Basically, what we have found is that they do not know how to deal with those thoughts in their minds. Now, the battle of depression always starts in the mind. If we do not know how to deal with those thoughts, then they will begin to move over into our imagination. They will paint disaster pictures, hopelessness, and soon, if left undealt with, they will move into the emotions, killing our joy and bringing sadness, depression, despair, which then causes us to move in the wrong direction, like contemplating suicide. Coming back to Psalm 42 and verse 5, where David asks himself, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Now David, turning to his own thoughts and feelings on the inside, realizes that he is depressed. Being the good shepherd that he is, he understood that he could not help himself, for he was cast down. The solution to his problem was not on the inside of him, but on the outside. A cast down sheep cannot get back on its feet. Its only hope is in its shepherd. Now while David realizes he is cast down, He's depressed. He also knows the way out and thus shows us the way. He has this revelation. Hope thou in God, he says. And that's the answer to our problem. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Ignoring the depressed condition on the inside, David says, I shall yet praise him. Praise always lifts us up because the Lord is enthroned on our praises. Hope is the other key. It is hope that the enemy targets through depression. As I said, the battle of depressions always starts with dark, negative thoughts in our minds. If we don't deal with them, they will move over into the imagination, producing 
disaster pictures, despair, and all kinds of negative things. Finally, it will enter our emotions, kill our joy, bring sadness and despair. And then, of course, as I said, we begin to move in the wrong direction, like contemplating suicide. Now, this is a vicious circle which finally ends with attempted suicide. When David says, hope thou in God, he preempts this vicious downward circle. Now, the key to coming out of depression is to look outside of ourselves, to look unto God. As David says, for I shall yet praise him, for he is the help of my countenance. Looking upon God's countenance is what helps us come out of depression. Let me explain why this is so through another powerful truth, the understanding of which will not only help us come out of depression, but also stay out of it. Let me show you how to use the inherent nature of self to overcome depression. Now, God created us. God created ourself with the ability to reproduce in us whatever it is focused on. We see this in the fact that we are great imitators. We find this especially so with little children. Just watch a little two-year-old looking at a video, especially if it's an action song. Very soon, this little one will begin to imitate. That is the reason why mothers will warn their children not to hang around with the wrong crowd because we become like the ones that we associate with. And this is because of the inherent nature of self to reproduce in us whatever it is absorbed with. In Adam, God meant the self directed towards the tree of life to produce the likeness of Jesus in created man. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, Paul says this, and I will read it out for you. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. Simply put, Paul is saying that if we keep looking at the face of Jesus, we will be transformed into his image from glory to glory. Now, if we do what Paul is saying in this verse, the image of Jesus will start to be formed in us. And we will not only come out of depression, but also stay out of it. So be absorbed with the Lord in worship. Commune with him. Meditate in his word, and depression will be a thing of the past. Now let me explain the way out of depression through prayer. As I said earlier, depression often starts with negative thoughts in the mind. If we do not deal with them immediately, they will begin to affect the imagination, slowly moving to the emotions and then leading us down the wrong path. So how do we deal with this thought, these thoughts? Repentance is the way. We need to repent for every thought, every negative thought, all the negative thoughts, those dark thoughts, things people said to us, repent for all that. All those worrying thoughts that are churning in our, in our minds, just repent for all those thoughts. The next thing that we need to do is forgive those that hurt us. Forgive them for the words they spoke and release them into the freedom of our, of our forgiveness. Forgive those who in any way contributed to the turmoil that's in our minds. Now, one thing we need to realize is that we gave place to these thoughts in our minds. We allowed them to come inside. And because we did that, we have come under the authority of those thoughts. They become our masters. And so when we want to stop thinking those thoughts, we are unable. 
Because there's a principle and a law attached to it, which Paul talks about in Romans 6.16. He says, Know ye not that to whom ye present, to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are, whether it be sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. What Paul is saying is that when we obey a thought, it becomes our master. We give it authority over our lives. And so what we need to do is renounce that authority and break it in Jesus' name. So now having confessed our sins, having renounced the authority given to those thoughts, they now have no more rights over us. When we confess our sins, the enemy has no legal right to go up to heaven and accuse us before God. When we break this authority, he then has no power over us. The next step to do is to cast out these thoughts, cast out the spirit of depression that we allowed to come in. We can do that in the name of Jesus. Having done this, we ask the Holy Spirit to cleanse our minds with the blood of Jesus and to give us the gift of a renewed mind. Thereafter, we should work at putting on the mind of Christ through meditation and reading the word. Now, I would like to lead you in a prayer that would help you to come out of depression. You could repeat it after me, and then this would be like a sample for you to use either on yourself or to help somebody else that is going through depression. Pray with me now. You can repeat after me. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I ask you to forgive me for all these depressive thoughts that I have entertained in my mind. Forgive me for the worry, anxiety, fears, despair that I've entertained in my mind, Lord. I receive your forgiveness and I thank you for it. By virtue of the cross of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, I renounce every authority that I have given to the world, the flesh, the devil, and the past, and to all these depressive thoughts in my mind. In Jesus' name, I break these authorities and I set my mind free. I bind all these thoughts and vain imaginations and cast them out of my mind in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, wash my mind clean with the blood of Jesus. Wipe away every mental impression created by these thoughts and give me your gift of a renewed mind. I thank you that you will. Now, if you've prayed this prayer, the Lord has heard and answered. He has forgiven you your sins, every authority that you had given to the spirit of depression or to all those depressive dark thoughts is now broken. So let me pray for you and cast these things out of your mind. As I pray, you just receive. Focus on Jesus and receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit as I pray. Lord, in Jesus' name, I sprinkle the blood of Jesus in the room wherever this message is being heard. I ask for your presence there in a special way. I thank you that the blood of Jesus protects each and every one of us from every backlash of the enemy. 
Lord, I sprinkle the blood of Jesus in the minds of those listening to this message. I thank you that the blood of Jesus brings deliverance to their minds. Now in Jesus' name, I take authority over every foul thought, every thought of worry, anxiety, fears, negative thoughts, critical thoughts, criticism, every depressive thoughts, thought. I bind all these thoughts in Jesus' name. I command them to leave their minds now. You will leave and go straight to your appointed place and you will not come back again. I take authority of the spirit of depression that has been robbing them of hope in their imaginations. I bind the spirit of depression. I command you to leave, lift off their minds, lift off their emotions now in Jesus' name. For you have no authority over them. Father, I thank you that even as I have commanded, these foul things have left. I ask you, Lord, to wash their minds of the blood of Jesus, and I release your peace upon their minds. Let your peace guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, I ask that you pour out your love into their hearts, your joy into their emotions. Restore to them the joy of salvation, Lord. I just bless them now. In Jesus' name. As Paul instructed us in 2 Corinthians 3.18, let me read it for you. Paul says, But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So now what I would say to you is, be absorbed with the Lord. Commune with Him in worship. Meditate in His Word. Let His, His Word constantly be on your lips. And depression will be a thing of the past. I just bless you now in Jesus' name. Amen.